How many who have Bibles? Lift up your Bibles. Uh, can you stand those who have Bibles? Stay. Okay. Those who don't have Bibles, stand. Sit down. Who don't have Bibles? Where were you going? <laughs> you are coming to church. Those who have got no book, stand. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down. Those who don't have no book, stand. You have cameras, eh? Okay, thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's read from John 16. I want to show you many scriptures. Uh, I told people that if we come to church here, what is important now is the word of God. Verse 1. He said, Jesus spoke. He said, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming. Say, the time is coming. coming. That whoever kills you will think that he offer God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Can you see that verse there? All right, just read this one. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, say the time comes, comes. you will remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. These scriptures are not different with this one of the same chapter on verse 32. I have finally told more verse 32. You can read verse 32. You'll find the same thing. I verse 32. Indeed, the hour is coming. In verse 32. Yes, he has now come. It means it's today that you will be scattered each to his own and leave me alone. And yet, I'm not alone because the Father is with me. Verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke these words after Judas was no longer with them. When Judas was no longer there, it was only the disciples Judas who were supposed to carry the work forward. When they left there, he began to tell them these ways. That the time will come that even the church won't understand you. They will put you out of their synagogues. But he said, I'm saying this so that you must not stumble or fall away. In other words, we Christians, we need to face afflictions, tribulations. Many times, many times we talk too much about blessings, success. The first thing that must come to us is we must face what Jesus spoke. We are challenged if we have courage. Can you just write courage? 
right courage. Because if you can see in Psalm 11950, it shows that, you know, it is in the comfort of us to find afflictions so that the word of God will sustain us. In other words, the afflictions will come. But that affliction is searching for the word of God in us. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need courage. The so courage we found it from the word of God. Courage is found in the word of God. We remember Psalm 34, verse 19. Psalm 34, 19. It talks about many of the afflictions <coughs> of the righteous man. But the Lord will Mara deliver Morena. him out of them all. Tribulation must come, afflictions must come. The challenges, challenge if you are righteous, but the Lord Mara Morena. will deliver you out of them all. You could see Jesus telling them, these people, that even people will kill you. After that, they worship God. They will After kill you, they because whatever they are doing, they are doing it having a mind that they know God, whereas they don't know Him. Let me take you back to the scriptures I was reading. If you read verse 2, it says, They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offer God's service. Think. Amen. The Christianity, the Christianity will be based on their thoughts in Plus their mind. So, not in their actions. Remember, actions shows fruits. Fruit, not thoughts. People can think and conclude. But you can and do whatever on you. It needs courage for you to move Remember on. Remember the Bible says, in the last days, there will be difficult times for us, for us to move forward, forward when it was. Courage. Because the afflictions that we are going to go through. What is affliction? What causes a persistent pain? Why affliction? Affliction is what causes a persistent pain. A pain that does not stop. When you say it's over, another one is coming. When you say it's over, another child is coming. In Isaiah 48, verse 10. Yes, Isaiah 48, verse 10. Can you read in the Amplified Bible? Yes, Isaiah 48, verse 10. Verse 10. Yes. Behold, I have refined you. But not a silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. It just ended there. Yes. It just says you are tested in what? I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Oh, in other words, our test is in afflictions. Read that verse again. You say, you say what? Okay, sorry. Read it. It's chapter 48, verse 10. Yes, Isaiah. It says what? <coughs> you can't find it, Mama. No, it is closed. Okay. Just read in your Bible. Is there what? If I like more Bible in Chalina, ring. I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. 
when God tests you, he use a furnace which is called affliction. There is nobody that will succeed in the Lord without courage. It takes courage. Can you see what you are going through now? God has to put you in a furnace of affliction. It is not a new thing for a person who is called a child of God to face affliction. It is when you are tested by God. There is something that I wanted to tell you which you don't know. When Jesus says, in the world, you will have tribulation. But yeah, because I have overcome the world. You are saying, don't look at those afflictions. Look that I have also went through the overcome them. Jesus will say, I'm the example of you. Uh, if it has happened to the Son of God, what about you? God must test you so that he finds courage. Unless you have courage, you are rooted out. Without courage, this is just forget it. Tell her, but without courage, in this world, just forget it. Let me take you to the book of Numbers 14. If we can see from verse 1, Numeri 14, verse 1. You will see the people that has been promised a country. But what But after that, what happened to them? Numbers 14. Numbers 14. From verse 1. Read, read, Mama, verse, read one. verse 1. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. Yeah. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we have died in the land of Egypt... Or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to the land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Carry on reading. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua the son of Nun yes. and Caleb the son of Jephne, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. And do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread their protection has departed from them and the Lord is with us. Stop Do there. not fear them. Stop there, Mama. This started by a report. From the spies. When they came back, they follow, people follow majority. You know, our Christianity even today, it goes by majority. The two were saying, we need in verse 8, look at verse 8. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into the land and give to us 
is verse eight. Are verse eight. These are the two. They say, you know, if the Lord delights in us, can we get that courage than what we saw? These ten, we say, in, I mean, Numbers 13, they will say, what we saw there. But truly, God spoke the truth. But we can overcome those people. You see, God was saying, I'll give you this land. Despise who stay in that land. They were turned. They were turned. This Okay. Or we can see we can see the land it flows milk and honey the way God promised God knows meleke but the people there mara batho ba ona ina these people really they are very dangerous e batho ba le ba kotsi they are giants ke ba nna ba bagolo and these affect people e batho ba le o kidinata they lost courage ba batho ba ba latelwa ke khulufelo they get aside. They say, this man Moses, he brought us here so that we die by the shot. This land is the land that kill people. It's better we elect a leader of ten him back to Egypt. You could see a spirit of rebellion rose up because of lack of courage. Many people, when they start to rebel, it's because they, can, they could not be sustained. Whatever you have to be sustained. By God to move forward. If you look at the situations, it will give you direction. These people, they say, let's rebel and turn back. But look at this man. You know, Moses was very different with us. Moses fell down. And and alone. Alone. And cry, oh God. Please forgive these people. Because now they are standing against the promises. You have spoken. Can you read verse 9 there? Only do not rebel against the Lord. Nor fear the people of the land. For they are our bread. You know these people will say this because. These people. Don't look at them who are there. Let's look at what God has spoken. Look here. Here Moses was saying, we take courage from the word of God, not by the visibility of the situation. Do you know that what we are doing today is we are looking at the situation. It brings discouragement. And our actions now are affected because of doubt. Once you lose courage, you, you don't have faith. Once you lose courage, you don't have faith. faith. Doubt creeps in. You know, maybe before I continue, I will tell you that in Charis, we have overcome because of courage. But we have got one enemy. Who is what has happened around us? What has happened around us? We see the fruit We see the fruit of discouragement. We found doubt. You find you in a church, but doubt is. When you lift your hands to worship, your, your hands are tired. Because once doubt enters, 
You can't receive anything from God. You are double-minded. You are on the other side or this side. I don't know if you are hearing me. So we need courage. We need courage. So we need courage so that we stand in the word what God has promised. It will come to pass in Jesus' name. It will happen in Jesus' name. I want to show you something there. Alright, verse 9 and 10. I want to show you. Only do not rebel against the Lord nor fear the people of the land for they are our bread and their protection has departed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them because once you lose courage, fear enters. Ten. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appear in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Amen. I was very worried here when I read this. These are the people that they have seen many things. They saw a sea divide its when Moses was leading them. I was asking myself, now they want to choose a leader to go back. How are they going to handle that sea? If they choose to go back, will they reach to Egypt? Who's to die in the desert? Because the moment you lose courage, you linger around the desert. Many of you, the reason why you are turning around one place, courage is gone. Because courage, open your eyes to your place, to the place where you are going. Where you are going, start to be clear. You don't see yourself struggling to get what God has promised. Once you have courage, you see yourself possessing what God has promised. In other words, courage establishing trust and brings, forth, and brings forth fulfillment on what God has promised. I can be here and then, you know, things are tough, but because God has promised, you will see myself moving to the promise. It doesn't mean that what I'm facing now is not a nightmare. I do it like Paul. I forget where I am. I press on. The Christians who have got courage will always press on. I tell you what, a Christian who is having courage will always press on. How many people today that they have turned back from their leaders? How many people come to church and goes out of the church again? Today, we have got many people who have got experiences. They, they, they fail to have courage when they are going to Canaan. They are lingering around the desert with wrong leaders. And they forget the promise of the living. Today you are in this church. Tomorrow you are in that church. Two years you are in that church. Because you want things to happen very fast. You must be tested if you are worthy of what God has promised. If you believe, say amen. In Mark 10, 46 to 52. 46 to 52. We see Jesus being called by blind men. The first thing that you must learn there is Jesus stopped because of his courage. When these people 
when he started to shout, the first thing what these people did was they rebook him sternly. They sternly rebook him. Yeah, keep quiet, you stupid man. You know, to sternly rebook or rebook sternly, it means rebook with insults. This is the man that was rebooked with insults. Yeah, you blame me, you are making noise. You are making noise here. If he wanted to see you, he was supposed to have stopped there before. There was a lot of discouragement he received before Jesus stopped. Let me try to tell you that many of us we get a lot of discouragement before God answers. Why? Because we have to be tested if we need business. If our courage brings forth results, that courage must be checked. The Bible says he cried the more. After he was rebuked, he cried the more. And the Bible says Jesus stopped. What is it that the people around King When he stopped, he said, Bring the man. Look when they got there, they say, hey, Have courage. No, he had courage before he told you. When they reach, they say, have courage. He's calling you. This man never answered. He knew he doesn't need courage. Listen, you don't need to be encouraged to have courage. People can speak your courage as confirmation. Tell about you, you don't need to be encouraged by people. They must find you having that courage. I don't know if you're hearing me. When they came to him, they said, Have courage. You are supposed to say, Ah, it's a long time. My short team was proving that I have courage. And you will not understand. Most of the time, when God wants to do something, He leaves people in their understanding, in their conclusions, and go beyond they think about what you are believing. When they are looking at you, they think you have faith now. But God was looking at the faith you had before they come to you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you just have courage? Have courage. Because God is looking on the courage you had before. Not the one you have now. The one you have now is taking you to move forward. But the one that will will pay you is the one that you had before. The courage you have today it will take you forward. But the one you had before is about to be getting that salary, that blessing, that success. If you believe, shout out. In Deuteronomy 31 if you read from verse 1 to 8 Verse 1 to 8. You see a very painful story. Deuteronomy 31, 1 to 8. Deuteronomy 31, verse 1 to 8. You see Moses after he lived 120 years. 120. God spoke with him. Moses, you have done your part. You won't enter Canaan. Now, there's a boy here called Joshua. It was a very painful thing. Joshua will take these people to cross Jordan. Moses was listening to God. Now, take Joshua in front of the chair. I mean, 
in front of the congregation pele asichaba look at the courage of moses lebella e mafulufulu a moshe taking joshua achia joshua and put him in the church in asamali yena pele asichaba pele abathu and say this man are munna is the one that will make it to cross river jordan yeah not at the little tsilang li yena nokay jordan he began to minister to joshua at joshua bulela le joshua so say you must be courageous modjo more ba mafulufulu you will take this people otlo chia si chaba se it's over with me na ya ka tsela e fedile ke sontjo sepela jono many of us if we can head that kind ba ba ntshi ba rena re ka kwa mantjo ma jwalo will go for fasting re tlo thomo ikona di jo go why mudi mo malatu i also even if you can lift joshua in front of me le joshua ka pha ama ke ntshi ke le gona allow me to melle si kene o re ke bone kanana don't allow me to die o ska ntumella ke ikhwe ke nyoko bona kanana must is stood up mosha emelela and say this one are o is the one who will lead you there ke ena ta le tang pele kwa le and the bible says bible re he was instructed even to write it in a law o ile a laelwa lo re a ngwale jwalo ka molao fatsa this must be read that re taba ye ba lwe o re me moses na moshe god makes me to speak with you about joshua that joshua will be the one to take you that side na ta le tsiang a le isa ka moshola and my ministry is over and wa ka moshe mo fellana mo You know when I was looking at the ministry of Joshua I, I can level the ministry of Joshua I said this ministry was not easy ministry Ne you see what you know God spoke with Moses Ke kala ba ka le modimo a boletse le moshe In Joshua 1 Mola o Joshua 1 If you read now from 8 to 9 Ao ba la o futwa o verse 1 to 8 Now is God himself now Modimo ke yena ka bo yena Because God knew that if even if Moses can speak Ka ba ne modimo a tse bo le moshe ka bolela What Joshua saw on Moses was not an easy thing. thing. So after he used Moses to speak to Joshua, he came by himself and said, "Joshua, Joshua, be ready now. You are the one to take this people. This man have encouraged Joshua. Because remember, we don't have the history." arena go tseba ka tsa gale before when god was speaking with joshua that joshua before modima to mobolela le joshua that that when moses spoke ba ya ona e thoma fela moshe to bolela are the courage as you will take this are when e ba le mafulufulu ka ro yotse ya batho ba o tshele le bona are the courage as he was brought before the congregation but this time is god himself confirming what the men of god has spoken ba ya bo le tsweng ke mothanka modimo moshe that i'm telling myself it na ke tsha mothanka wa ka when nana ke wa no tsho tsho a auto tsha taulo listen tele tsha taba shi ona le batho ba bantshi ga o fili wena ba ba nyamilwe o understand that now my servant she shall not take any wa jono ke mochere so don't look at them don't look at the scriptures level la mangwalo meditate them they are ka wona mo shi o le montsiare look at them ora ha o ka level la batho ba they will show you that you are not fit you are not as good as wena ha wa a u botso ba o khonitlo o swana le moshe ba no level la mangwalo so that you won't compare yourself wena o ska ta wa te ba le motho o la o tshe re mmere go hae a ke se ba le ntwa God here was trying to Modimo transform na le ka o bringing courage ka o tisa mafulufulu now you are on your own ore jana ngwena o ye mo le titi o ti what you are about to see to tse o tata o di bona i exalt you anna ko phamisa a ona motho ka mo mora wa hawa o tsebela o ti you need courage o thoka felo ba le mafulufulu wena na anna tsaka le ntse ka ba na ona motho these people mo ba thuba ka o fela you what you are the one to tell when i can when also to encourage yourself and i'm going to make you full so that you will be encouraged you know when i was looking at that i said oh i can level it up i understand why god came ya kwishura wa mudimo atile atabula le joshua ka buyena joshua depend a lot joshua na setele kudukudu ka moshe i don't know if you hear me i get some lento Joshua might have been crying Joshua because when Moses Allah. when Moses was gone God when God spoke he says my servant is dead that, that was the first message my servant is dead now you rise take over 
when I chat I don't know if you're hearing me listen you need courage to take over your assignment if you believe say amen tell the person I need courage to take over my assignment it's not an easy assignment what you are created for no one cannot understand he will beg you might not be there you must understand that Moses was making Joshua and Joshua never wanted to live God's presence when Moses is here Joshua is there but now when Moses is no more where is Joshua I will say hey it is your courage that can make you to be sustained in your calling. I don't know if you are hearing that. It is your courage that will make you to be sustained in your calling. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Read Proverbs 11 verse 3. Proverbs 11. You will find that you are guided by the courage Proverbs 11. Just read. Verse. Verse 3. Verse 3. Yes. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct this way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. Which scripture are you reading? Are you reading for? Chapter. Proverbs 11 verse 3. Proverbs 11 verse 3. Yes, I was reading the one. Read. Verse 3. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. God will use the integrity you have to guide you. The courage you have. You see, integrity is seconded is seconded by the courage. What you are doing, which people are looking. Are you hearing me? For you to do it, you need courage to do it. So God will always use that integrity to guide you. So that you will be able to make it. Are you hearing me? Yes. Read Proverbs 11 verse 3. Verse 3. You must know that you will never please everybody. I don't know if you hear me. You will never please everybody. But listen, that, that is why, why the Bible says that. It why means for you to do, to why have that integrity, for you to have uprightness, you will be challenged. It's as good as now you're a Christian, your family does not believe in you. For you to say, I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor, it doesn't end there, you will be challenged. But your doings will guide you. I don't know if you hear that. Tell them, say, what you are doing, it will really guide you. If it will guide you, it will protect you. If you want to see that you are a Christian and you are not going anywhere, you are challenged in what you are doing and you are You are challenged You are courage. When I talk, uh, uh, don't ever think when you say you are Christian family will understand friends will understand don't ever think your husband will understand your wife there are things that God wants you to do after you have done them you will be questioned why you have done them so look here if you stand on what you have done you will do it again even when you are challenged because it becomes your guidance when people look at you they say we know this person is a Christian why? because they will leave you alone and see if you will, you will do it again have you ever found 
that when you are Christian, when you are doing something, when you are doing something, people will just look at you. But one will leave a lane. That's right to show you that you are not doing it right. Especially in church. Not all amen are amen. We pastors, we are not supposed to be ruled by the people we are preaching to. Because these people can be misguided. They can be misled. They can be regrouped. They can stand together. To affect your direction. It takes courage for you. To do it and carry on doing it. I don't know if you are hearing that. If not. You will be surprised. Your friends when they come. You change. Other comes, you do like them. That is why when Paul, that is why Paul, look at Peter. He said, "This does not show courage." Peter, what you are doing is very wrong. We were together. We eat with Gentiles. Now the brothers who are Jews, when they come, you run away from them. And this has affected the ministry of Peter. And remember, it was God now who forced Peter to faint so that he understood this ministry. I don't know if you are hearing me. So you can limit yourself if you fail to stand your ground. I don't know if you are hearing me. You need courage to believe on what you believe in and to stand on what you stand on without anybody's business. You don't need anybody to challenge your stand. Because you are questioned if you are fit for what God wants you to do in your life. If you believe, say amen. Whatever you are going through is a challenge to you. That tribulation, that suffocation, that suffering, whatever you are going through, opposition, it must never challenge you when you fall. Fall away. Stand up your position. Take over. Move forward. And God of mercy will open that door for you. If you believe, say amen. If we read Proverbs 31, 22 to 23. I love that verse there. You say what? Proverbs 31 verse. 23 to 24. 23 to 24. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Here, I was reading about these proverbs. You know, I found this woman. We are lacking such kind of woman who have got courage. You know, women are people that they love to do things in groups. They come together, they influence each other, they influence they gossip. But this woman was a different woman. This is a woman that it's only a husband that say, I have a wife. This woman is a woman that reflects our Christianity. Where God can say, Satan, have you seen Job? No one is like him. Job was a man of God. Job was a man of God. Listen to this. If you compromise your stand, you will be diluted. And you will fail in your assignment. Can you see this woman? Very, can you read again 23, Mama? Read this woman. Read again. Listen to the woman that have courage. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes to the mansions. This woman cannot wait for her husband. 
can't sit down with a talent. And the husband was proud. Tell me, don't sit down with your talent. Make God proud. Make God proud. Make God proud. What is it that people will say? What is it that people will say? I will tell you what they will say. They will say, ah, this woman is working for this man. Because the moment when you have courage, you do things that men can understand. You break tradition. If you now you can follow the tradition, if you are limited. But this woman broke the tradition. Even when men were sitting together, they were talking about other men. You have got a wife who cannot wait. If this, when she found opportunity, she do something. We need to be Christians when we found opportunity, we, we use it. Many of us today, we have withdrawn. We are like what Jesus spoke. If you put a plow, and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. If you still want to hear what people are saying, you're not fit for the kingdom. I don't know if you hear me. We need Christians who are, who are mandated, who are not afraid, who cannot wait, when they get opportunity to use it. Today, how many Christians we have today? They wait for pastor, please come and clean the church. Those who want to intercede, please come. Courage is broken. They were in a church where they were singing, they were discouraged. Their spirit is very tired. They can't pray. They can't fast again. They are tired. No one can be proud of them. I don't know if you hear. Ask somebody to say, are you not discouraged? Are you not discouraged? Very soon, You'll be going from this church and you go to this church you go to that church thinking you'll get what you will never get it. You, go to this, you find that you know all servants of God but you don't know even one verse. You, you know all these pastors even how they preach but there's no verse you are standing on. What you want to do is to solve your problem. You want to solve your sickness. You want to be parted. You want to be rich. You will travel everywhere. There will be nowhere you call a spiritual home. Listen, God has allowed that to challenge your courage. This is the time where you can rise up and Proof that you have courage. You must stand up and face what you are facing. He who has got courage is not afraid of what he is facing. And he cannot be intimidated. He cannot be influenced by anyone. He knows what he wants. You will carry on with what you believe in. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I'll give you a few scriptures and we close. First Peter 2, 19 to 23. Courage makes us to endure without responding. That is courage for you. When you have got courage, when people are speaking against you, you don't respond. How do we know you have good courage? You don't respond. 
because you know where you are going. If you don't have courage, when you just hear people say you have raped, you say, I didn't rape. When people say you kill someone, I didn't kill anyone. I don't need to prove for yourself. Go on, fight for you. To prove that you have got courage, you must keep quiet. However, if you have got courage, you understand that they must curse you. Blessed are you when people curse you. So that courage will take you forward. Do you know why now Christians are not different with hatred? Because they don't know where they are going. Everybody is fighting for a white bread. The moment when you see people like coming to you, coming oh, to you, you begin to fear. Maybe they want to take my bread. No. I mean, even if there's no bread, the Bible says we can live by the word. Courage can make you not to respond. Just write it down. Courage. When you have it, you won't respond. You won't respond any allegation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 12, verse 7 to 11. By Hebrews 12, 7 to 11. Any challenge when you have courage, number two. <coughs> any challenge, challenge. You will call it a chastening from the Lord. The Bible says. I mean, if we who as fathers are, are able to chasten our sons, we can agree God to chasten our sons. Any challenge, challenge you just say thank you, Lord. You'll call it a chastening from the Father. God. It's when you've got courage. You understand that you are living right, isn't it? You won't say this is happening because of sin. You will say God has allowed it. It's chastening me so that I will be able to handle God the future. For you to be blessed, you must be poor. For you to have many lands. You must be a destitute. I don't know if you hear me. For you to be celebrated, you must face rejection. There have to be opposition. What, what you're going through is opposition of what you're supposed to be. Call it a chastening of the Lord. When now you face that, you'll be able to pray. Able to fast, be able to... Can, can I tell you this? There are times where fasting becomes difficult. I'll tell you when I finish preaching. It's when everything is there. It's when all the fridges are full. But now, before the fridges are full. Mara, you know, be before empty. the fridge is full, I don't know if you are hearing me. I get so before you become a millionaire, you must have a zero million. account. When you hold this card, you question How if it is in a, is an or account. You must even forget your even pin you number. Leave, leave your pin number. I don't know if you are hearing me. The chastening of the Lord takes you to a place where you will understand that you will fail to have a desire of anything. If you still have desire, of the things of the world. You need, you need shambok from God. I don't know if you're hearing me. Ask somebody, how is your courage? Can you see now uh, many of you, you don't know how God works. Before God blesses you, ah, you must face you must face tough times. You must really face a lot. If truly is God want to bless you. Sometimes you must ask yourself, what is it that I'm going to eat? That one is a very good thing 
to shape your courage. You start to learn that I can sleep without eating and pray. Before those TVs, the TV checker of those TV must not be there. The TV chair is on So that you'll be able to switch them or off or and go and pray. It's a chastening of the Lord. I'm praying that today, you people, you see that what you are going through is not a curse. It's a shaping of courage because of where you are going. Because of where you are going. Where you are going is not small. I want to tell you a Christian that I don't fear. It's a Christian who never suffered. That Christian can pray. That Christian I don't fear. That and that Christian is not a Christian too. A Christian must face suffering. Tribulation. Persecution. Challenges. Sickness. Disease. Distress. If you meet that. How can you the Lord will deliver you. But if you just, everything is okay. Everything, everything is okay. okay. Everything is okay. Everything, you are not a Christian. If you are faced, everything is okay. Everything you are not a Christian. When that pain is hitting you, are you still going to do what you were doing before? If you are doing it, you have courage. When you are feeling pain, Waking up and pray with pain. When you are praying with that pain, you are showing courage. When you are disappointed and you are still carrying on, you are showing courage. If you are not facing that, you are still going to face it. And I'm here to tell you. Today, God will revive your courage. You will make it in the name of Jesus. I say you will make it in the name of Jesus.